powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. Well, the U.S. Senate inches closer to passing a huge tax reform bill, but concerns over its impact on the deficit has stalled the measure. GOP leaders remain optimistic about the bill's chances, but say it's too early to tell if they've got the necessary votes to pass the measure. Senators working into the night at this hour as the GOP tries to work out the kinks in the bill. Supporters say the bill will grow America's economy, but opponents argue it helps the rich at the expense of the middle class. CBS's Weijia Zhang has the latest from Capitol Hill. Republicans are trying to get their tax overhaul plan over the finish line. I think we got a good bill and I think it's going to pass. At the center of the Senate plan is a huge cut to the corporate tax rate, which Republicans say will help U.S. workers. The reduction in rates on businesses means that they have more to invest in their businesses. And one of the byproducts of that is it goes into higher wages for their employees. Democrats oppose the bill altogether. They warn it's only step one of a longer range GOP plan that will harm the middle class with cuts to entitlements. You will not support any cuts to Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Do I have that word I, I, from you? I, I am not going to support any cuts to people who are on the program and need oh, those benefits. There it is. He just told you he's going to cut Social Security. Lawmakers' concern about future spending cuts is due in part to a new analysis showing the tax plan will add $1 trillion to the deficit over the next 10 years. Democrats forced a vote to return the measure to committee for a rewrite with smaller deficits. Republicans rallied to defeat the measure. The motion is not agreed to. A final vote is expected Friday, and the GOP can only afford to lose two votes to get the bill passed. If it does, this Senate plan will have to be reconciled with the House version passed earlier this month. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Tonight, the White House is predicting that the tax reform bill will be signed into law by Christmas. An intense one-day job interview will whittle four candidates down to one to become the next Billing City Administrator. Billing City Council members will decide and hope to announce tomorrow who gets the job. First up today, Ron Alice. He's the current Helena City Manager. Alice told the council he's happy in his current role and says it will be hard to leave the capital city after 18 years in management there. In fact, he told the council the only job in the state he'll consider or wants is the city administrator's job here in Billings. Alice says he believes the biggest challenge facing communities today is to update aging infrastructure. The second morning interview, Kevin Smith, the current director of the Truckee Tahoe Airport District in Nevada City, California. Smith has spent his entire career in public administration, including management of a small suburb outside Salt Lake City, Utah. Smith is married to a Skyview High School graduate, and they were married here in Billings. Smith says he looks for opportunity to find buy-ins on issues from city staff and city council. This afternoon, it was David Frazier's turn in front of the commission. Frazier grew up in northeast Wyoming, but he has spent the past 20 years in city management in Kansas, Michigan, Colorado, and Nevada. His most recent job, city manager in Boulder City, Nevada, that's a community near the Hoover Dam. Frazier said after touring the Magic City, it feels like a good fit for he and his family. Wrapping up the finalist interviews, Greg Doyon, the current Great Falls city manager. Doyon waded through some serious economic issues in Great Falls. Today he discussed his view on dealing with funding for Billings Public Safety and City Service City Finances. He said it would be important to develop a good working relationship with the city council. Doyon also spent time as a city manager in Franklin, New Hampshire. Now again, the council hopes to announce the new city administrator tomorrow. That individual will replace Tina Bullock who retired September 30th. In California, a jury has found Jose Inez Garcia Zarate not guilty in the July 2015 shooting of Keith, or Kate Steinle in San Francisco. Now, this case became a political lightning rod in the debate over immigration policy in sanctuary cities. The 45-year-old illegal immigrant had been deported from the U.S. five times before the shooting on a San Francisco pier. Zarate faced a charge of second-degree murder the jury did, however, convict him of being a felon in possession of a firearm. For that, he faces a sentence of between 16 months and three years. He also is now subject to immediate deportation. 
Jurors today found a 35-year-old Billings man guilty on two counts of promoting teenage girls for prostitution. Marlon Thomas used the website Backpage.com to promote a 17-year-old girl and a 19-year-old woman. An undercover agent responded to the ad last year and began texting with the younger girl. Officers met the girl at a hotel and questioned her. She said she and her friend met Thomas at a party where he told them he could help them make some money. Thomas then posted photos of the girls online and directed them via text message to meet customers. Sentencing is set for February. Here in Billings, too many children spend their childhood in the hospital or the courtroom instead of the playground. That's because across the nation, reports of child abuse are on the rise. But as Q2's Asia Gore explains, one organization of unlikely heroes is helping kids heal. Sugar hops on his bike, a cigarette between his teeth, ready to hit the road. Don't be fooled, he didn't get his biker name Sugar because he's sweet. I got hit with a sugar beet while I was on my bike. Sugar, along with Elvis, Sippy, Spice, Shaggy, and Twister, ride for Baca, Bikers Against Child Abuse. Bikers is our first word. Yes, we are bikers. And I think that's why it works with the children, because we are intimidating, and they get that sense of comfort that they know that nobody's going to mess with them anymore because their new family is bigger and better than their purpose. Baca is a nationwide organization with the Yellowstone River chapter here in Billings. They may look tough, but when it comes to kids, they have soft hearts. All their rights were taken away from them. Um, they weren't allowed to be a kid anymore. We step in and let them be that kid. Baca empowers young victims, taking them for a group ride, letting them choose a biker name, and giving them a personalized vest. You go from them being scared, wanting nothing to do with you, that you're just another adult that's going to let them down, to having them come running outside and just to watch them bloom. Baca members undergo months of specialized training so they can help kids face their abusers here in the courtroom. I don't really focus on what's being said in the trial. I, I try to send all my positive energy to the child so that they can do what they have to do on the stand and I'm strictly there for them and nothing else. It's a sense of security and support that one Billings mother says may have saved her child's life. My daughter was raped by somebody that we cared about and trusted. She says her daughter began cutting herself in an effort to cope. But after she found a Baca flyer and reached out. I was contacted the next day by a lady named Sippy. Everything changed. My girls had nightmares for a long time. They don't have nightmares no more. They learned that it's okay to be broken and that there are people out there that do care and won't hurt them. In that moment, when a child is no longer afraid and the wounds begin to heal, is the reason Baga rides. We call it the payday. When you see that child that's not scared anymore, that is not crying, that's actually sleeping through the night, and that's what makes our hearts sing. That's what makes us do what we do every day. Oh, it's awesome. It's cloud nine. You know, you leave the courtroom and you're just, your bike's not even on, on the ground. You're just floating in air as you're, as you're going home and it's the most amazing feeling in the world. In Billings, I'm Asia Gore, MTN News. Thanks, Asia. Now, BACA members, which can be found in 13 countries, are not paid for their work. It is all volunteer. And if you or someone you know could benefit from BACA, well, you can find their contact information on our website. Turning to weather, we have Art Walk tomorrow, Bob. How many layers should we wear? That's a very good question. Well, what did you wear during the holiday parade last Friday? Weather's going to be very yeah, similar to that. Good. And, of course, the Art Walk, that's where we, all of the art galleries downtown Billings, they keep the doors open a little extra late, let the patrons come in and, and check out all the art. They can look at it. They can buy it if they so choose. And the weather, well, here's what it's going to be like. It's not bad. Downtown Billings, 6 p.m. Friday night. It's going to be mostly clear. Winds will be out of the south. It'll be about 42, mi uh, 42 degrees, so really not that bad of a day. Very similar to what we had a week ago on Friday during the holiday parade. And we'll continue to see temperatures kind of cool down as the rest of the night goes on. And we'll have your forecast for for the rest of the week. Tomorrow and Saturday look pretty good. We'll chat about that in a few more minutes.
All right, thanks, Bob. Well, Star Wars will return to the big screen in two weeks, but fans young and old can celebrate early this weekend. Local illustrator and Career Center art teacher Russell Wax will host the Star Wars themed gallery at the former St. Vincent de Paul charity store on Montana Avenue. Now, Wax developed his career as an illustrator with the George Lucas Universe and has had his talents commissioned for national campaigns of the series. The two day gallery will highlight the timeless story. There's something for everyone in Star Wars. You know, there's something for the four or five year old kid, especially these newer movies have a really, really strong female core, a feminine aspect to them, which I think is, which I think is fantastic as a dad to three daughters. And that hero's journey that, that Luke took, that Ray is taking, that's all about following your dreams and about doing whatever it is that you're meant to do. Because of that, I think Star Wars is timeless. And I think that if you grow up with Star Wars, Every time you return to it, you'll, you'll discover something new, both about yourself and about the movies that can uh, sort of help you along your path. It all kicks off at 5 p.m. Friday, and all ages are welcome. Art will also be available for purchase. Christmas trees line the Metro Park Expo Center tonight for an annual event to help children and families. A live auction for the 32nd Annual Festival of Trees brought bidding on 41 of those Christmas trees. Businesses, groups, families, and individuals put together the Christmas creations. Now this is the biggest fundraiser of the year for the Family Tree Center, which works to prevent child abuse. Tonight is the first of three days for the festival. Public viewings and other events scheduled tomorrow and Saturday as all are part of the Festival of Trees. Well, the actor probably best known for playing a bumbling Marine has passed away. Jim Neighbors passed away at his Hawaii home today at the age of 87. First of all, my name is Pyle. Private first class Gomer Pyle. Andy Griffith discovered Jim Neighbors singing in a California nightclub back in the early 1960s and promptly offered him a spot in an episode of The Andy Griffith Show. The rest is history. The innocent and honest to a fall character resonated so well with fans he got his own spin-off show in 1964 and after that show ended his showbiz career carried on neighbors once lived in whitefish montana but sold the home to move to warmer hawaii his husband stan cadwaldater said neighbors die neighbors died peacefully in his sleep well still ahead on tonight's 10 o'clock news medical marijuana producers rally in helena to protect their livelihoods at the state capitol and later in sports, the latest on Bobby Houck's return to Missoula, including reaction from two very different viewpoints. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen.